Scientists are no more self-critical than anyone else. They hate to be criticized and they never criticize themselves. The, the popular myth of science is a uniquely self-critical institution and scientists as men who would rather be consumed at the stake rather than fudge their data. I mean, that's, that's okay for a PBS special. But that's not the real world. That's not what's taking place. I mean, uh, put yourself in the position of a Daniel Dennett or a Richard Dawkins who are used to being uh, the regnant priests of a powerful orthodoxy. And uh, for the first time in their lives, someone says, hey, you guys are simply not credible. Of course they're going to react with outrage and indignation. Uh, I don't think we should make any large claims about the progress of science. We understand science as little as we understand the cosmos. I like to see, uh, think of all of evolution groaning its way toward the accomplishment of the noble and lovely thing that is me. But of course, as a critic of Darwinian theory, I, I don't hold with that. Um, heaven's sake, let's open up the discussion a little bit and present some countervailing views, at least to the extent of, of um, appraising Darwinian theory um, in the context that realistically portrays it for what it is a kind of amusing 19th century collection of anecdotes that is utterly unlike anything we see in the serious sciences. That would be my favorite position. Um, yeah, biologists do agree um, that this is the correct theory for the origin and, and um, diversification of life, but here are some points you should consider as well. One, the theory doesn't have any substance. Two, it's preposterous. Three, it's not supported by the evidence. And four, the fact that the biologists are uniformly in agreement about this issue could as well be explained by some solid Marxist interpretation of their economic interests. That would satisfy me. It's not asking for much, is it?